Okay, welcome back to Freedom Camping. So today we're going to talk about winterizing your camper slash travel trailer uh, RV. Um, this is going to be a not a one size fits all video. Certainly, this is going to be a good guideline for everybody. Um, but certainly, follow your manufacturer's guidelines and specifications for winterizing your particular unit. Um, this one, we're going to be doing our uh, 2021 Coachman Apex Outfitter today. Um, so all the guys that have the 208 BHS and I even believe the 194 um, from Coachman and Nano um, should be really close to this. So uh, pay close attention if you guys have one of those. But as a general guideline, um, certainly my video today should just help you as a general overall procedure on winterizing your, your water systems, I should say, uh, for your travel trailer or camper. Um, so today that's what we're going to focus on. We're going to focus on the hot water heater. Uh, and clearing the pipes and certain getting antifreeze in the system. So what you're going to want to do is um, all campers and travel trailers do have low low drains, they call them. Some of them have ones in the front and the back. Our particular unit just has them in the back. So I'm going to walk around here and show you where our low drains are. Um, I've already went ahead inside. I opened all the faucets and everything inside. Um, the faucets are on the open position. We want the air to flow through the pipes, thus helping it drain out faster and better. So um, I do have the hot water heater cover open a while. We're gonna address that next, but let's go check out these low drains over on this side. <clears throat> so like most campers and travel trailers, you're probably gonna find that your low drains are either by your bathroom or by your black and gray tank uh, drain. Um, a lot of them are located down here. Now again, check your specific model. You may have two sets of them. We have one, uh, again, some of them have two. So <clears throat> this is actually a very simple system here. Um, these actually, you can do this by hand. Uh, it does thread both directions and you will see pulling the plug out here, it's gonna drain any water that's in our system. Um, very important that you check these uh, because you want to get all the water you can out of the system. So that's the that was the cold water. I'm going to put the plug back in. And then it does screw here. It's a two-part, so you want to make sure you get them both nice and tight. Uh, that way you don't have any issues when you go to fill it back up in the spring or certainly leaking throughout the winter if any of your antifreeze would leak. Now let's do the hot water. And you'll notice, guys, sometimes that from the road dirt, debris, and sort of grime back here, you might have to uh, fight with it a little bit if you got any dirt back here. So I did pre-check these just to make sure. And there's our hot water line. And one thing while I'm back here talking about the, the lines and the, and the low drains here. Um, if you're at your campground or you have access to a place where you can run your black tank flush and then certainly drain your uh, septic system, uh, maybe the last time you're at the campground, uh, run the black tank, tank flush for a good 15, 20 minutes. I recommend it. You wanna get the black tank nice and clean before winter. Um, since we are talking about winterizing, I ran it for 15, 20 minutes water coming clear out of there so um, we know my tank is, is good and clean at this point so certainly uh, before you leave the campground for the last time for the year make sure you run your black tank flush real well so again let's screw these back in here <clears throat> okay tight so let's go back over this way now we're gonna go to the hot water heater. The next step is definitely the hot water heater. Um, before you guys do this, make sure you have all the tools that you're gonna to require and need for this. Um, certainly our manual uh, actually had the wrong size for the drain plug here. It's actually a 23 millimeter. Um, most of these are probably gonna be that size. Our book for some reason told us 21, um, but it is actually 23. So I went ahead and I did pre-loosen this just to help make it quicker for the video. But we're gonna go ahead here. Um, also, before you unscrew that and let that out, your pressure relief valve for your hot water heater is right here. Always want to check your pressure. So go ahead and keep that open. You can actually, if you're close, 
you can hear it right now, the air going in and the hot water heater sort of glugging, the air is flowing through the system. So when I pull this drain, with that pressure valve open now, it's going to drain nice. So we do have a six gallon hot water heater. Some of you guys might have a different size. Um, ours is a Dometic hot water heater, and they do say there's about a gallon, two quarts to a gallon that'll remain in the bottom of the hot water tank. Um, they say that's okay, and it won't hurt it if it does freeze in the winter. Um, the big thing is you just don't ever want to winterize your camper with your hot water tank full. So of course this is spewing out a good amount of water here. Um, very important that we get this, all this out. So again, and after your, after your camper, RV, trailer, travel trailer is a couple years old, it's also a good idea to maybe hook a hose up and then power flush the hot water heater as well. You can get some sediment that does sit in the bottom of the hot water heater that could lead to long-term issues with it. Um, if you do have any sort of dirty water or anything that maybe have got in there, you want to flush that out. Um, ours is only six months old, and uh, certainly I've flushed it once already, so um, I think we're good to go. Uh, of course, I want to make this winterizing video as easy as possible for you guys. So we're going to continue to let this drain again with the pressure relief valve open, letting the air come through the system. So while that's finishing up, I'm going to grab our antifreeze. We're going to go inside here in a minute. We're going to show you what's going on inside, and then we're going to get ready to pump the antifreeze into the system, show you where the pump's at. Now, again, this isn't a one-size-fits-all video because some of you guys may have different pump locations, different type of pumps, and some of your pumps are actually, you might even be able to hook up outside and pump your antifreeze through. So, again, this is more of a general video on winterizing, and if you have an 2.8 VHS, an Outfitter, um, any of the Apex Nanos, it's going to be very, very close. So, we'll see you guys in a couple minutes. We'll be right back inside. Okay, now we're inside, so I'm going to show you guys a couple things inside. Uh, certainly, I kind of prepped our scene here a while for you. Now, again, pump locations will vary depending on your model or style of travel trailer. Ours is in the lower bunk here in the back. So, of course, um, ours being the 208 VHS Outfitter, um, this does fold up in the lower bunk. So that's one piece. But in this back corner is the access panel for the hot water heater as well as the pump. Uh, and all the valves are down here. So I did go ahead and get the screws out of the plywood a while. So that's out. Generally, there's only two or three screws there. Very simple to get out. <clears throat> now, again, I have all of my faucets open. So sinks open. And then in the bathroom as well, I actually have the shower and the sink. All the valves are open at this point. We want that air to run through the system and get as much water out as possible. So that's why they're all open at this point. So... And come over here, I'm going to go ahead and, I know it's going to be a little tight, and I might actually have to take the camera here and show you guys what's going on. But if you look down in here, you're certainly going to see our hot water heater, the back of it. Of course, it's covered in styrofoam. And then over here, this guy in the corner is your pump. So, of course, this location, again, is in the bunk in the rear. And it's actually pretty easy to get to. You just got to watch your head. You don't hit your head up here. Um, so I'm going to actually take the camera now for a second. And I'm going to come down here. So here's what we're looking at, guys. Here's the pump, and then you'll see a series of valves. Um, there's a valve. There's another valve. And then over here, your hot water heater valves. So the first thing we're going to want to do is turn off your hot water heater valves. We actually do not want to get the antifreeze and the winterization fluids in the hot water heater. Uh, they don't recommend it, so um, we're certainly going to go ahead and shut those valves off so none of that gets in there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, and they're off. Now ours comes equipped with a hose to help pump the coolant through the system. The hose is right here. And what you're also going to want to do here we're going to flip the pump, or flip the uh, hose here, the valve. And we're going to turn the valve on then, so it actually can let the coolant go through the system here. So we're going to go ahead, I'm going to pause the video for a second, I'm going to get my coolant ready, and we'll get ready to start pumping this through. Alright, so 
Uh, we've got our gallon of antifreeze out here. I'm actually going to show you these. Um, we are actually using the Canco uh, antifreeze today. So I have three gallons here. Um, for a travel trailer of this size, um, three gallons should suffice. We might be able to do it until we'll see, but I have the third. Um, it is pretty inexpensive, guys, about four bucks or so a gallon. So it's pretty in inexpensive. Um, you definitely want to do this. Uh, <laughs> The couple dollars you're going to spend in the antifreeze and maybe the half an hour it's going to take you to do this is much well worth the uh, investment here, considering uh, if you were to freeze a line thousands and thousands of dollars later. So um, what I did is right now I have the sink shut off, the sink in the bathroom shut off, but I have the bathtub on right now. So you're going to want to locate your pump switch. Now we have an electric pump as well. So our switch for the pump is in the bathroom. So I've got the hose all the way into the bottom. And we're going to go ahead now and we are going to turn on the pump and we're going to suck the, suck the antifreeze to the system. And then you're going to see it start to come out red um, in the bathroom here. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this on now. And you can see already um, turning it on pretty quickly. Um, I have antifreeze coming out of my, my piping here. So um, now I had both the hot and the cold on. I know it's coming out of there. So I'm also going to do, I'm going to turn this back on and we're going to turn the pump on, but this time I'm actually going to spray it out of my shower head because I also want it coming out of my shower head. And it's red. There we go. So now we have it coming out of the shower head and the faucet. This one is done now. So we're going to go ahead and turn them off. It does make a little bit of a mess, guys. I mean, certainly it's going to happen, so uh, just be, pre be prepared for that. Uh, so we got that hanging back up. Uh, now that is done. Now let's go ahead and we're going to do the sink in the bathroom. I'm going to turn the pump back on. So I'm going to show you. It does come through pretty quick with the pump, so we're going to turn on the cold, and then we're going to do the hot. Cold. Really, there we go. Now, as you can see there, you could definitely tell that there was a lot of water, a lot of clean water in that hotline. So it's a good thing that we did both. You're going to want to do them separately. Works a little better, I find, than trying to do them both at the same time. So one than the other. Um, so now the bathroom, in essence, is done. Um, I am going to go ahead and switch over to a second gallon now. Um, like I said, I think on this on this particular model, um, we're only going to need two total gallons. But always want to have an extra one on hand just in case. So there's that. Let me get a paper towel here so we don't make a mess. over okay make sure it's all the way to the bottom guys it's all the way in now we're gonna do our kitchen sink so i'm gonna go ahead and turn it all the way to the cold and we're gonna turn the cold on you can hear that pressure come through the line and it's even dripping all the water now we're gonna turn the pump on and run red already so pretty quick there now i'm actually gonna we have a dual vessel sink so i'm actually gonna turn it over onto this side now you always want a little bit of antifreeze in your traps, guys, uh, as well, um, for winterizing. We're going to turn it now to the hot. Again, I want it both sides, some antifreeze in both sides there. Going to go ahead and we're going to switch the pump again. Now you can see it's running clear water again, and here comes the red. Good. So plenty of that running through. Okay, and shut that off. So we've got the in inside done. Now there's only one more thing to do. Um, this one I might say is the trickiest. You're gonna need two people to do this. Your city water connection, there is a valve outside that you do press to help get the water out of the city water line. Um, so I'm gonna have to go out, I'll show you that outside, and then we're gonna do a two person here. Somebody's gonna have to be inside working the pump while I'm outside depressing the valve. So. Um, I'm going to go get the tools ready for that. We'll be back outside in just a second. 
Okay, so we're outside at the City Water Connection. Um, you'll see that all of yours should have a screen, basically a little filter here. Um, be careful that you don't bend it and get it all kind of messed up. So um, you pull that out a little bit, pull the screen out. Now you're gonna look in here, you will actually see the little valve that I'm talking about. We're gonna try to come up here. If you can see in there, there's that valve. You're gonna depress that valve. Um, I use a, a flat screwdriver um, if you have a pick or anything else. You're gonna, you're gonna wanna stand back when this does it because it'll actually shoot a stream out of this. So just be aware of that when you're getting ready to do it. Um, it's certainly gonna squirt fluid everywhere. <laughs> so um, certainly mine's shooting pink already. Um, it of course just got me wet. There we go. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go inside and turn the pump on and we're really gonna shoot it out of there to make sure we have any of that fresh water uh, out of the line and it is all antifreeze. Of course, I already have it all over myself. It's gonna happen. <laughs> so just get ready for it. So that's pretty much it for winterizing. When you're done with the city water connection, um, we're actually gonna, I'm gonna do the shower too. It's the same purpose or same premise. So when I go inside, I'll turn the pump on. I'll open up the shower here. Um, don't forget to do this outside shower, guys. It's something a lot of people overlook and that can cause a disaster there too. So I'm gonna get this opened up. We'll do the city water, we'll do all this at once. And then really finally, guys, at the end, now that you have some water in your gray tanks um, and you do have some, some fluid in your black tank from the toilet. Um, certainly, it's a good idea to drain anything you have left. If there's a little bit of water and antifreeze mixture in the tank, it is okay. A lot of people do say you should drain it. Um, I do try to drain it. Um, here where we keep our camper for the winter, um, we do have the luxury of being able to empty our tanks here as well. So um, we do have that luxury. Not everybody will have that luxury. So. Um, if you do have a little bit of water and antifreeze mixture in your tanks, it is okay. But the sooner you can get it out of there, the better. So, um, again, we're going to do the shower here in just a minute. And I think we'll be done with the video. So, we'll be back in just a minute and we'll get this finished up. And, of course, it's starting to rain. So, we'll try to hurry up here. Okay, so we got the pump on uh, inside. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to do the cold water first for the outdoor shower. You can see, again, guys, lots of clear water there first. Now it's good and red. Going to do the hot water, make sure the cold is turned off. Lots in there as well. Okay. And we are off. Okay, so now the outdoor shower is nice and winterized as well. Again, do not forget that, guys. A lot of people forget that, and they have major issues in the spring. Okay, one more time. We are going to hit the valve here. Try not to make a humongous mess on myself, which I don't know that's possible, but valve. There we go. And that's definitely pink. So, fresh water valve is good, city water rather. We're gonna go ahead and put the filter back in so we don't forget that. Okay, on. So that's pretty much it, guys. Um, you know, here it's your winterize, winterizing your camper. Again, this is our 2021 Apex Outfitter based off the 208 BHS platform. Again, I think really my point here, guys, is just Make sure you get all the water out of the system through all the avenues of, um, you know, your, your drains and everything. Again, make sure that your toilet, all your drains, sink traps, make sure they all have antifreeze in them. You want antifreeze basically in everything that water touches, you want antifreeze in it for the winter. Uh, certainly where we keep our camper in northern Pennsylvania, it gets extremely, extremely cold below zero. So, um, you know, as far as winterizing, we, we want to make sure we absolutely have everything done correctly. So. Thanks again for watching Freedom Camping. We're going to be back with more. Um, even though our camping season 2020 has come to an end, um, we got a lot of great stuff planned for the winter, guys. Look out for all of our new reviews. We're going to do some product demos. And then we have some great things coming up with some RV dealers uh, lined up for uh, 2021 models and new things coming. So stay tuned, and we'll see you guys soon.